New York Mets. It's the MLB on 2K Sports. They'll play before a capacity crowd here at City Field, 45,000 plus. The big bat of David Wright, an MVP candidate every year. Thank you for joining us, Major League Baseball, presented by 2K Sports, Thursday afternoon game. And we're going to see Johan Santana, our starting pitcher. Steve, getting ready for this ball game. What do you think he's prepared to do against this Florida team? It's not often left-handed pitchers use their changeup against left-handed hitters, but Johan Santana's is so good, it's effective against lefties as well. And the good thing for him is he can locate that fastball, look for that slider to continue to improve as well. The Marlins lineup looks like this. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, keep your eye on the young player, Logan Morrison, a guy who's very patient at the plate, will work some walks. Not quite the power hitter that he will become because of his size, but a guy that can hit the ball to all fields, put the ball in play, and make a lot of things happen offensively. Getting the game started, Chris Coglin at the plate. And Santana's wide that time for a ball. Well, that's where you look for a changeup from the pitcher away in the strike zone. If they look for it and get it, they can really shoot that thing the other way and do some damage. Ball and two. this is below the knees. Ball two. Here it comes. Swings and misses at that fastball. Now it's two and one. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter. Swung late. Ugly pitch. Catcher able to somehow scoop that out. Here he comes, 3-1. Slider swung on and missed, 3-2. 3-2 on the way. Here's a swing and a fly ball. A wow. foul ball. And on a full count, and he fouls another one off. Boy, 3-2 oh. pitch, and you're looking for something you can drive. He made an unbelievable pitch in a great location. Give the hitter, though, a lot of credit. He kept this one going. And Chris Coughlin goes down swinging. Strike three. Got him to chase that ball down and away. Good pitch. Not real good execution by the hitter. Now well, it's a good look here at the Mets. Here's their defense. Infield, outfield factors in this one, John? Well, keep your eye on the outfield and Angel Pagan. He might start in one position and by the end of the game end up at another because he plays all the positions and plays them all well. He has a great ability to get to the fences and rob home runs and possesses a great throwing arm. One out, nobody on. Low pitch from Santana for a ball. Well, the Mets and Marlins kind of battled it out in the middle of the National League East in 2010. They fought hard on the field, but the Marlins came out the victor. The 1-0 now. And the called strike is taken by Infante. 6-12, and that's the Mets record against the Marlins. In 010, that's kind of a reversal of past years. Well, very talented young roster in Florida. The Mets with so many injuries, just inconsistent. And the Marlins played hard against the Mets. Strike oh, he pulls the string on the circle change. One and two. Now, his put away pitch is that change up. It's been very effective to change speeds on a one two count. Look for him to possibly throw it here. The one-two from Santana. Ball two. Omar and Fante not biting on that one. It's a ball evens the count. 
Well, that pitch right there, that change up away. If a guy's looking for it, that's a great pitch to be able to hit the other way with some power. Here's the pitch. Infante hits it on the ground. Played by Castillo. So Infante is retired. So, Hanley Ramirez will try and keep it going. Lifetime only 143 off Johan Santana. Outside as Ramirez takes it for a ball. Here's the 1 0 from Santana. Ramirez, ground ball. And he'll step on first to retire the side. And they go quietly offensively in this half inning, nothing across. And the Mets, their first chance coming up. We'll take a look at the starting pitcher for Florida. So, Steve, how do you think you'll go about handling these Mets bats today? What makes Josh Johnson effective is everything works off of his fastball. Upper 90s with movement. Then he'll throw a slider, breaking the other way to keep the hitters off balance. And then a chain speeds. He has an exceptional deception on his changeup. Johnson with a windup. And he takes a strike on that fastball. 1-1. One, one. Reyes contact and a foul ball. Johnson now count one and two. Good eye by Jose Reyes. He lays off that one and it's even. Strike three swung on by Jose Reyes with no contact. Well, two strikes. You have to try to fight off this pitch. You have to think away and adjust in. They went away, but he couldn't make contact. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Well, you got to take a look at Carlos Beltran. I mean, here's a guy that can hit from both sides of the plate. He hits in the middle of the lineup where he's expected to produce runs, but he also plays a position that he's expected to take runs away, and that's what he's done throughout his career. One of the best players going in baseball. make contact on that bunt attempt that's a strike well the Marlins showed in 2010 they can battle with the best teams in the National League East they couldn't separate themselves but they were right there with everybody else on the way Pagan hits this one Infante feels it so Pagan is retired Marlins against the East. That's where they've got to win. They were two above 500. Uh, it's interesting, though. They beat up on the Nationals, beat up on the Mets, but they lost 11 out of 18 games against the Braves and 13 out of 18 against the Phillies. Johnson with a windup. Ball. First pitch inside. Ball one. Here's the 1 0. Strike one. Okay. 
And Beltron makes good contact here. And the Mets get that one in for their first hit of the ballgame. He'll hold there at second base, credit him with a double. But with two outs and you get a big double right here, the last thing you want to do is get stranded. You got a little momentum, you got the pitcher on the ropes. Let's see if they can take advantage. And it's David Wright now. Lifetime, 231 off Josh Johnson. Bell trying at second. Johnson with a windup. Starts him out with a slider for a strike. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hitter. And it's a called strike to right. Well, with a couple strikes on him, Gary, I'm going to go right at him with a slider now. He struggles with that pitch. Trying to get him to chase a slider, but it's one and two. When you throw a breaking ball like this, you want to start it on the corner and break it off the zone, trying to get the hitter to chase. The hitter didn't take the bait here. And he leaves that one alone. Right, patience, evens the count. Fastball called. Strike three, and the side is retired. Good work, Josh Johnson. He's got two strikeouts already. And it'll be the Marlins coming right up. Big bats ready to make an appearance. And in the batter's box at Stanton, he'll start it off here in the second. Here's the pitch. A shot up the middle, and it's caught by Castillo. That's an atom ball right there. That ball was smoked. He stung it, but right at the second baseman. And Sanchez is batting. Well, a bright spot for the Mets in 2010 was their play at City Field. A very streaky team. A significant differential between home and road. Pretty good at home. Base is empty. One out. He swings and nails a liner. Two down. Kind of surprising that the Mets had that good record at home. Here's a ballpark that initially a lot of people, including players, complained about. Well, you know what? Hard to hit the ball out of the ballpark, so you have to manufacture runs. And they won because they led the National League in stolen bases at home in 2010. Two outs and nobody on. Ball! And Santana's wide that time for a ball. Now the 1-0 pitch. Strike one. Swing and a miss. Logan Morrison. That'll even the count. The 1-1 pitch. Smash towards the middle. And that one's going to drop in. That's their first hit. So John Buck will come up. Well, with that big two-out hit right there in this inning, you know the manager's in there telling him, let's not let him breathe. Let's not let him get that third out. Let's score before this inning's over. Two outs and a man on first. Ball. First pitch fastball. Misses badly that time. 1-0. Well, they threw that pitch right there down and in just off the plate. Let's see if they come back with another fastball down and away. Ball lifted high in the air. Deep down the right field line. And Pagan's there. And so they jump out to the 2-0 lead. Wow, what a great time for a two-run shot like that.
With two runs coming in to score on that long ball, we can take a look at the win expectancy graph. Now, Gary, looked like he was setting on that pitch. He got it and drove it out of the park. What they're going to want to do in this ballgame now is take advantage of that and build that momentum up. Well, they need to still be aggressive out there and go right after him. Marlins offense coming together right here, Gary, able to take the lead. Now they want to ride this momentum and see if they can't extend it. Base is empty and two down. Santana sets and throws. It's now 0-1. Watch that fastball go by. This is a really momentum feel home run. Uh, you get it at this point of the ball game. You add some juice to the whole offense. Well, this could be a decisive moment in the game. I mean, these hits early on could ultimately impact the result at the end of the game. Who tries to frame the circle change, but it's 1-1. One and one. Circle change that time misses, and it's two and one. And he lays it down. He'll try to beat it out. Santana throws to first in time. That's three down. And so the scoring came in the second. Second inning sees the first two runs of our ball game. The Marlins lead. Two to nothing. Middle of the lineup coming along. Afternoons in New York, the city all around us. We're at City Field to take in this experience. And Jason Bay up. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. Stanton, there's a good defensive play. Well, they followed the scouting reports. They moved the outfielders back before the play, and they were in exactly the right position to be able to make the catch. Good coaching. Davis into the batter's box. Base is empty with one away. The pitch. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And that sets down Davis. And in the batter's box, it's Tolley. Base is empty with two outs. Ball one. And Johnson outside a bit. That'll be a ball. He tried to backdoor that pitch, but left it out and away. Oh. 1-0 is a fastball that runs away. 2-0. Well, he doesn't want to fall behind 3-0. He commands his fastball better than any other pitch, so look for him to throw it. Here's the 2-0. He watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike, 2-1. It's a nice location with that fastball down in the zone. If he makes contact, it's going to be a ground ball. Here's the 2 1. Ball. Fastball on the black. He doesn't get the call, though, and it's 3 and 1. Black fastball right there just missed, just below the knees. Tell you what, a borderline pitch. I think they wanted that one bad. Let's go, Mets. Let's go. Into the motion now, the 3 1. 3 1, a fastball that's by him. 3 and 2. The best pitch in baseball is the fastball down and away, and if you can execute it, you can be very effective. That's why he got the swing and the miss. Payoff pitch coming. And he takes that one and misses for ball four. 
Well, the hardest thing to do when you have an at-bat that lasts this long is sometimes you have a tendency to be impatient and chase one. Give the hitter a lot of credit. It was a close pitch, but he laid off of it to earn that walk. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch, fastball, 0-1. Just a 214 career batting average against Josh Johnson. Pitch on the way. Drill towards third. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. So they can't push any across here in this half of the inning. The Marlins still lead. It's going to be Johnson now. He's going to start the third here. Santana sets and throws. Sliders in there. No balls and a strike. Checked his swing, but it's in there. 0 and 1. That's a foul ball. Oh. Johnson battles with another foul ball. Well, anytime you're down 0-2, the bottom line is you want to be able to cover the whole plate. You can't look inside. You can't look outside. Oh. You have to just swing and protect in a defensive mode. That's what he did there on that pitch on the outer half of the plate to foul it off and live to see another pitch. Popped way up there behind home plate. Good effort there, but he couldn't get into position to make that play. Well, this is one of these you just hang in and you're fighting for dear life trying to see another pitch. He threw what a great pitch right there. Anytime this deep in the count, you throw an off-speed pitch. You know you can fool the hitter. Didn't fool him. He fouled it off. Fastball swung out and missed. Struck him out, one away. Well, 90 miles per hour on the gun, but still not much movement. A good job of keeping him guessing by changing speeds out there. And boy, John, you saw the effect of that. That swing, he wasn't even in the same time zone. But going from off speed to a heater like that is never easy. And even guys that make the big bucks have a hard time adjusting. And it's Coglin batting. Lifetime numbers, 313 off the Mets. One out, nobody on. And here's the first one. Ball. And Santana's wide that time for a ball. Well, Johan Santana had another effective year in 2010. And you know, people, watching pitch, a fastball and a changeup. That's basically the two pitches he throws, but yet he perfects them and he throws them for strikes and he throws them any time in the count. That's why he's so good. And that one falls in there for a single. That will bring Omar Infante to the plate. John talking about Johan Santana. He finished 11 and 9, had an ERA that was under three. And Steve, uh, he's just very effective with those two pitches John talked about. Well, he is, but it's going to be interesting to see how he comes back this season. Remember, the velocity disparity between the fastball and changeup allows the changeup to be effective. He's had arm problems, and you wonder if that velocity is going to be where it's been in the past. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. Two down. And it's Hanley Ramirez at the plate. Coglin on at first base. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Line drive. And Davis pulls it in. No runs on a hit. And they'll strand him. Florida two. The Mets nothing. 
Leadoff hitter is Scott Hairston. Well, with the pinch hitter entering the game right now, the game is officially over. That's the end of the line for the pitcher today. And Johnson outside a bit. That'll be a ball. This guy's got a great slider, Gary. When he's got control of it and can locate it where he wants, it's almost unfair to the hitter. one on the way. Fastball misses badly. He's behind 2-0. Steve, uh, talking about that pitch and how unfair it is, we'll uh, know how good it is by the number of bats he saws off. Well, he gets so many swings and misses, too, where guys just can't center that ball. So he gets broken bats and swings and misses. He waves at that fastball, 2-1. and one. Well, he's going to be aggressive at the plate right here. That's what the numbers indicate. Why not pitch him something off the plate and see if he'll chase it? But you run the risk of a walk later. And he swings and hits this one wow. foul. And Buck sets up his target. Ball. And he watches the low pitch from Johnson. Oh, it's a great fastball right there down in the strike zone. Now there's so many ways to go. Let's see how he comes back to attack this hitter. Here's the payoff pitch. Swings and grounds this one foul wide a third. The full count pitch. And he fouls off another one. Well, you have to respect the ability of a guy who's just not giving up in that bat right here. He is grinding it out. That slider, tough pitch. He got just enough of it, though, to stay alive. And he misses on that one. Ouch. Ball four. Leadoff man's on. Now that's what you want out of leadoff man in an inning. Get on base any way you can. Great patience at the plate. That's going to bring up Jose Reyes. Struck out swinging last time. A runner on first. No outs. First one to Reyes. Here's the pitch. Ball. And there's the pitch inside from Johnson. He deals. Swung on and ripped towards second. The second, there's one. And Infante's got two. That Keystone area can get a little rough, Steve. Nice turn on the double play. Not just the way they draw it up. Great pivot by the shortstop. And it'll be Pagan standing in to hit. Batting 250 lifetime, 3 for 12 record against Johnson. Two outs, space is empty. Here's the pitch. And a fly ball could be the last out. This one to Morrison. That's going to be a wrap. Final out of the ball game. Fans going home unhappy in this one. Their offense just did not get it done as the opposing pitching just shut them down. Wow. All right, here we go. It's that time. Uh, we're going to take a look now at our player of the game. Josh Johnson really pitched well today. Well, any starting pitcher will tell you that the last thing he wants to ever have to do is to turn the game over to the bullpen. They like to finish what they start, and that's exactly what he did today. He had all his pitches working, and he had complete command of the strike zone out there. He kept his lineup in check for the entire game and finished it strong. It was a shutout. They mustered only a couple of runs, but they didn't need any more. Well, it was all about pitching in this one, and the bats just weren't there today as the pitchers dominated the game. So glad you could join us. For Steve Phillips and John Cruck, I'm Gary Thorne. We'll see you real soon.